Hello and welcome. My name is Flo from flowmotion.eu. Today we are going to take a look on a product from Digital Juice called Toxic Templates and how you can use those templates to create your own look and how to customize them and also how to add some stuff to it. So at first I'm going to show you how to get started with the juicer in general and how to get started with your template file. After that I am going to show you how to use the stroke effect and how to work with masks and passes as this whole animation is based on this line, this stroke which is walking all through the frame. In a third step I'm going to show you how to create this silhouette look and how to replace other objects with this new one. And after that I'm going to go through a few steps to create a final look and I'm also going to add light and music. So let's do this! At first you have to open up your chooser which is the library from Digital Choose. Here you can find all the different projects, animations, music and all that nice stuff from Digital Choose. So I'm going for the projects and templates. And I'm going to After Effects Projects. Here I can select which product I want and as I want to show you something from the Toxic Template Collections I'm selecting the Toxic Template Collections. Now I directly see all the templates which are in there and I can just click on them to get kind of an impression what they will look like later on. And sometimes I just take a look at all of them to get inspired. So and after I have clicked on a few of them I found that this one really looks nice and that I want to work a bit on it. So when I open it up by double clicking on it I can directly see that there are also different versions of it. Like this 2D one and this one goes really into depth. Looks really nice and I think I will work with this one here. So I'm just clicking on the AE, the After Effects button, send project to After Effects and open as new project. Could also import it into a current file but for now we just want to open it as a new one and I click on send now. Now it opens up the project and let's directly save this one. Save as and let's just go to the projects folder. I have already the 001 version here. So let's call this one 002 and hit save. And now I just give you a small overview over the project and what it looks like. You can see all the different layers here. You can see that there's an animated camera and this one is also connected to a null object which drives the animation. But you can directly see by the number of the layers that there are many many layers missing in here. And this is because this button here is enabled. It says hides all layers for which the shy switch is set. And this guy here is the shy switch. So let's just quickly click the shy button and there we have all the layer and as you can see there are over 120, actually 121 different layers for this project. And just that you get an impression, you can just select all the layers, hit the U button and there you see all of the keyframes which are in the project. So as a good starting point you may just scroll through the timeline and somehow get an impression of your whole project. You can also go inside some of those pre-comps by simply double clicking on them. I will quickly open up one of those clouds layers here 
and you can see all of this is also animated and all of this is made in a Photoshop file. If we hit the U button again, you can see that all of this is also animated in position and scale. And what I did with the clouds is that I simply replaced them with some notes and then I had the whole animation with notes and not with clouds. So let me quickly show you how I did that. You just click on one of the layers and to go to the Photoshop file you can just click with the right mouse button and open layer source and project. There you have it in your project window and then you can simply go with the right mouse button again, reveal in Explorer. There you have it in the Explorer and just open it up with Photoshop. So here we are in the Photoshop project. You cannot see it quite good right now, so let me just enable a background. I have already created a node instead of a cloud inside the cloud layer. So when I enable the other ones, you can see that there are all those files from the project in it. Some leaves. So you can always go back into your After Effects project and there you see the name and the layer of your clouds in this case. So it's layer 2, element 2. So in here it's the project is called element 2 and it's layer 2 and there I have my node. And so you can just go on and directly start creating your own stuff. So let me quickly hide this background layer again and I'm going to save this one as the original one. It asks me if I want to replace it. Yes, I want to. Okay. And back in After Effects, if I now click on the element again and click on Reload Footage, you can see there are now all those nodes inside my project and of course they are animated. And back in my final project you can see that there are everywhere where the clouds have been there are now nodes and this is really cool because this clouds layer is used so often. And here's another small tip, select all the layers which I have adjusted and go to the color and just give them a different color so that I can later on easily find them again. When I scrub through it I see all those brown layers and there are my clouds. Another thing I did when I was doing those clouds I just found that they are somewhere around here all those nodes but then they disappear and I don't have them all over here so I can just duplicate them by selecting all of them and hitting Command D for duplicate. Now I can just bring them over here. If you can't see those markers for all the layers you can just hit Command Shift H and there you have them and as I colored them blue I can directly see that this must be all of those here and then I can just bring them back into view. And by the way I'm just zooming in and out in the composition with my mouse wheel. And now I already have nodes everywhere and of course they are animated. What you normally would do at the end of an animation I do it at first. I start adding some small details. As far as I come to a point where I really have to create some own stuff. And as I wanted to do something with this stroke effect, with this line, which is always animated through the whole composition, I directly thought about a musician's cable, which is always going through the frame. Another thing I have done is when you take a look at the beginning here, you can see that there are some birds flying around. And I also went inside of this composition and just 
adjusted the wings of the birds a little bit so that they looked a little bit like bats, just as a small detail. And I especially love these details which you can't really see but they really help selling the shot and help selling the look and feel of the whole animation.